It is so hard to believe that the Switch is already four years old. It's like, I got the Switch when it came out, and it feels like yesterday. Yeah. It was actually the first console that I got the year it came out, because all the other consoles was like a year after, usually. For me, it was the first console that I actually got on launch day, so I'm very, very excited to be talking about it today. Same here. Yeah, and uh, I have a lot of fond memories. I think that was really the last time I went to a launch uh, of uh, of a console, um, and it was it was really something else. It was really magical, and I don't think I really don't think I would ever I'm ever gonna get the experience again. I mean, you could. It's just going to take a few generations, because they already released the PS5 and Xbox Series X. But I remember yeah. when I got my Switch, it was day one. We drove past the Best Buy, my dad and I, and there was a line a mile long. Then we were thinking about going to GameStop, there was also a line there. However, Walmart did not have that big of a line. There was only one person waiting, and it was indoors too. So we just got to wait in the store, everyone was super nice there, everyone was excited to get the Switch. and. Even when people wanted to just, usually you would stay in line if it's outside so nobody cuts you in line, but everyone agreed just to keep their spots and we got stuff like beef jerky, I remember getting a Mountain Dew kickstart, and I think almost everyone got a Switch that day, so it was a great time. Yeah, and also the reveal in general of the Switch was really exciting, and like the time leading between like the initial reveal and then the presentation and then the launch of the Switch, that honestly felt amazing oh totally and, yeah and i think there was even people that waited outside for a month to get the switch that was captain the... nintendo dude i think yeah, yeah. Alex, i remember him oh yeah yeah i i used to watch his channel a lot around the time the switch came out and also like other channels like switch force and stuff like that their content oh, yeah. is almost completely different now but back when the switch came out it was all about the new console coming out and the hype for the Nintendo Switch. And it was just really exciting. I think anything after the Wii U was just kind of a big deal for Nintendo. Not to mention, it was a magical time for Nintendo fans. It was a brand new promise of a new thing. You had Breath of the Wild coming out. You had the the new concept of a portable console that you can have docked. And I think that, you know, for me, and this is controversial, I actually really liked the look of the Joy-Cons. They looked super intuitive. I know they definitely still have their problems but even just looking at it, I said, this looks like a well-designed console. It looks fun, it looks intuitive, and I think the day that it comes out, it's going to be a massive success. Yeah, I was thinking similarly. I really like the design of the console. Even when they just showed in the reveal trailer the standard gray Joy-Con model, I thought it looked really sleek. I thought it looked professional. And overall, you know, I definitely think that the Switch had a lot of potential from the beginning. So the question we're answering this discussion is, has the Switch lived up to the potential after four years? Let's talk about it. So I think we should start off with some of the pros of the console, not referring to the Pro Controller, of course, some of the actual, you know, really good things about the consoles. I think that with the Switch, the idea of it being a console handheld hybrid is brilliant. It's really gotten good use for me. I can bring my Switch anywhere I go. It's so cool being able to play these console games on the go. And it is a feature that I don't, I just can't see the next console Nintendo makes without. Like, it's that big of a deal. Yeah, I, I think, like, honestly, in my opinion, I think it's the best idea Nintendo had for a console. And I think it was partially driven by Iwata in his last years. And just around that time in general. And I feel like the Switch, like, with it um, being, like, a big concept of having both handheld and home console gaming that was probably one of the last concepts that iwata came up with and overall i feel like it was like a really good idea and it was kind of like revolutionary for the video game industry oh totally. i completely agree i completely agree with that and then as well i every nintendo person or a nintendo user at the time like we had the wii u and sure it wasn't perfect but i'm sure at least once or twice people thought you know the Wii U would be such a great console if we could take that on the go. Like, it has such good games. Like, you have Super Mario 3D World, you have Pikmin 3. You have a great variety of games, including Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. I mean, come on, that's a near-perfect game. 
But I think that capitalizing on that success, and I think they definitely listened to the fans on that aspect. It, the Switch was definitely a make or break system. And I think that they handled it perfectly. Yeah, Reggie said that. He said that after the Wii U, the Switch was make or break. So it could have been Nintendo's Dreamcast scenario. And it seems that it's worked out quite well. Yeah, I had yeah. a feeling I had a feeling from the start that this was gonna do well, just with its like even from the initial trailer with how the advertising was executed, it just felt like it was just Nintendo trying something completely new to kind of jumpstart their um like their policies and um products with their company again, so I think too, the, like Nintendo has primarily advertised to children. And I think that with the uh, with the resurgence at the time, before they had the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4, I think with the Switch, they advertised it, the first trailer, I can tell you, it was primarily aimed toward young adults. And I yeah. think that that was probably the smartest choice that they had because that is probably their, their largest demographic is because those young kids are now growing up from the Wii and the Wii U and now they have the Switch. And I think that, as Reese said, that advertising was handled exceptionally well, unlike right. the Wii U, which was primarily advertised towards children. I and, had... oh, uh, go on, Reese. And also, I would like to add, remember those um, trailers at the beginning of the, um, around the time the Switch launched, where it just had this random box in the middle of the city, and then people went inside and then played Switch games. And then there was like one in the middle of nowhere. It kind of reminds me of like the older GameCube trailers a little bit. Just with, oh, like, yeah. yeah. And I think they had one with, like, John Cena in it or something like that. So he wasn't oh, doing yeah. the Fred movie. He was in a Switch commercial. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know what? I wouldn't be surprised. Um, I guess for me, uh, Dimitri, you and I, uh, we, we were there when the Switch was announced. I remember the whole NX hype. Um, remember Rumor Explain? And everything, uh, it, it was it was pretty interesting uh, till up to the reveal of the Switch. I think we were all kind of anxious because, you know, we all love Nintendo and we don't want them to fail. Um, but the Wii U was failing. You know, 2015, 2016 were awful years for Nintendo. I, I'm not even gonna sugarcoat it. I would but... say that 2015 was decent because at least that gave us Splatoon, Super Mario Maker. Yoshi's Woolly World and a few other games, but yeah, 2016, yeah. when the game of the year on the Wii U is Mario and Sonic at the 2016 Rio Olympics, and yeah, I would not consider There's... that a good year for the Wii U. Yeah. That means there is most definitely a problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, no, but when... I remember you and I both, we watched it at the same time, and we were like, don't tell don't tell me anything until uh, you finish the, the trailer. And... I remember it was nighttime, and I was watching the Switch presentation, and we already kind of knew it was going to be a, a console hybrid system. But um, I think what sold me on the Switch, and I might be jump, uh, jumping ahead a little too early, but that first Super Mario Odyssey trailer, yes. I, yes. I, I, yeah. I, I was hooked right away. Like it, Literally, every time I watch that trailer, I get goosebumps. Like Reese and oh I, my God. Reese and I actually just wrapped up the stream where we had this conversation, uh, and how impactful Odyssey was to both of us. Uh, Odyssey came out. Well, Odyssey was revealed during a really rough time in my life, and I think just the promise of a new 3D Mario game, but not well. You have a new 3D Mario game, but as well, you have a brand new Nintendo console. I think that was just so magical. And I yeah. remember the E3 trailer for Odyssey so fondly with Jump Up Superstar. That just kind of threw everything for a twist. And yeah. I will never, ever forget that. And I think that Nintendo had the smart idea uh, with launching that. Well, it, they didn't launch it, but they had it for a, what was it, October release date? October yeah. 2017, yes. Yeah, that was it was their first year and they put out a brand new Zelda game and they put out a brand new 3D Mario game. And I think that was the probably the smartest thing they could have done to build up that initial hype. Oh, totally, oh, for sure. Yeah. And like you guys yeah. said, where Super Mario Odyssey was really the point for you like, "Yep, I am definitely sold on the Switch." I mean, I've followed Super Mario Odyssey ever since the 5 seconds of footage in the Switch reveal, but oh my oh, gosh. Same. Oh, same. 2017 God. Switch reveal. Oh. I was just blown away because I'm going to get more into like everything about Odyssey, but when it came to that game, 
During that period, it was a little bit of a bad period for Mario games. The games were very similar to each other. It was New Super Mario Bros. Oversaturation. You had games like Mario Tennis Ultra Smash, Paper Mario Sticker Star, and even Color, Color Splash. Splash. Yeah, Color Splash, oh, more like Paper God. Mario Belongs in the Trash. But then Odyssey <laughs> comes along, and that game changes everything. When you, that you saw that reveal I... trailer of Mario in the City, then going to a Mexico-inspired desert, then going into yeah. this gigantic wooded area with robots, and then a low-poly lunch land, whatever you want to call it. It's We know the name's Mount Volvano now, and it's in the Luncheon Kingdom, but wow. Seeing that creativity and care put into a Mario game, this was the dream Mario game I wanted, by the way. And we'll definitely get yeah. into how oh, I yeah. feel about the game and how you guys feel about it, because... Honestly, Super Mario Odyssey is a very important part of the Switch experience for all of us, I would say. But overall, I... the Switch build-up was fierce. It was very strong. The hype was out yeah. of control. Every day leading they... up to the Switch, tra or like the Switch presentation, the reveal was dropped randomly. But the presentation in January, it was very, very exciting. But then, Absolutely. 2017, just all throughout 2017. Everything was great. There was a lot yeah. of promise for the Switch. It was a great year. But overall, we're going to talk about how the Switch has held up. We've talked about our experience before the Switch came out. A little bit of it during it. We love the concept of the console handheld hybrid thing. So we're going to go on to some more positives about the Switch. And speaking of Super Mario Odyssey, the Switch, hands down, has some of my favorite games of all time. It is hot yeah, to my favorite game of yeah. all time. Like, with Super Mario Odyssey being my, also my favorite game of all time, Animal Crossing New Horizons, I mean, it's one of my most played Nintendo games now, and Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, my second favorite game, and Super Mario Maker 2, Link's Awakening, even though that's a remake, but there's a ton of games that I really <laughs> like on the Nintendo Switch. Not to mention, you have all of those games plus a brand new Smash Brothers. That is insane! And with the Switch's portability... Yeah that just optimized the playing field for new jet for new types of gamers you have brand new gamers who have never experienced a smash game before you have the old ones that come back from smash 3ds or wii u or god forbid melee but then the thing about smash was the way that they built the hype and i we have contradicting opinions about that e3 and i get it it was all about smash and the rest was kind of boring but you cannot deny that smash's presence on the switch did deserve that amount of time and the way that they had handled DLC, we've gotten Banjo-Kazooie, which is by far my most wanted character of all time. We've gotten Minecraft Steve. We've gotten and, Terry Bogart. Yeah. We've gotten... And then with Minecraft Steve, you you saw my reaction to that. <laughs> you saw mine my Banjo. Yeah, we got we got our most wanted characters in, and I think still waiting for yeah. Crash. I think we're all missing the reactions to when Waluigi is revealed, so you could see Demetrius' reaction. And then when Shadow the Hedgehogs revealed, you could see TNT's reaction. Actually, I would kind of prefer Dr. Eggman or Crash, but Shadow would be okay, too. <laughs> wow, you actually admitted you'd watch Shadow? I thought it was a joke, but... All right, Tails doll, I... then. Uh, <laughs> Metal, no, knuckles. Metal, Metal Knuckles. Metal Knuckles. <laughs> but yeah, with Smash, I will agree that we have very contradicting opinions on that E3. I will say, though... Even though that E3 was just smashing, I know you really liked when they talked about Donkey Kong's facial expressions instead of talking about the next game coming <laughs> to the Switch, in any series for that matter. Like, we could have heard about Animal Crossing or something like that, but no, it's the facial expressions on Donkey Kong that matter. I do think that the hype leading up to Smash was very strong. King Rule's reveal was great. And even though I felt like with Smash Bros. there was a little bit too much hype, like too much promotion stuff like that just a little bit too much i did definitely enjoy the game i put 100 hours into it and it's my favorite smash despite some of the problems i have with it like the core gameplay the roster the stages are that good that it's easily my favorite it's my go-to game when i'm playing multiplayer smash yep. definitely one of my favorite games on the switch but when it comes to my yep. all-time favorites i mentioned this countless times super mario odyssey is my favorite game of all time for one it's a completely new take on 3D Mario, while also maintaining what made the original games great. It's open world, but more so open where it doesn't kick you out of the level, the controls are buttery smooth, the locations are so cool, so different from anything we've seen, the creativity in that game is pouring, and overall, 
That's just a Cliff Notes version, but I love Super Mario Odyssey. Then going on to another game, I would say Smash Bros. is up there with my favorites. I explain why. Then we're going to go on to Breath of the Wild, of course. That is on mm -hmm. Wii U, but it came out the same day on the Switch, and I don't think many people really cared that it was on Wii U. Great game, got me into the Zelda series. What more can be said about Breath of the Wild? It's just that good of a game. Then you got yeah. stuff that came out later on, like Super Mario Maker 2. It's a definitive Mario Maker. It has so many more course elements, themes, so many improvements from the original that it's totally worth getting if you play the original. Again, it's a sequel, of course, but we're not going to talk about ports just yet. Luigi's Mansion 3. Wonderful oh, game. One of the... Yeah. Actually, game. scratch that. The best-looking Nintendo game. Has yeah, some it great looks like gameplay. a Pixar game. Yes, it does. It does. Yeah. Look, it looks straight out of Pixar. It's a great, great gameplay comparison. that meshes the best aspects of Dark Moon and the original together, while also creating something new and refreshing. It's that good. And I know what some of you are thinking, especially T&D thinks this. Do you only play Mario games? Well, not necessarily, because a lot of games on the Switch, which we'll get into kind of after we talk about our favorite first-party games, Animal Crossing, another great game. Animal Crossing New Horizons came out right when the pandemic started. So grateful to have it then. It was great playing it. I still go back to it occasionally, and I know it has some issues with content and stuff, but I still had a really great time with it. But yeah, overall, it's actually my... It's actually my most played Switch game since I have like 335 hours in it now. So wow, I ha I have over a thousand hours in Smash. I think I have a problem. Yeah, I think <laughs> you do have a problem. But wow, I gotta say I will s that the Switch definitely has some amazing titles. So I'd like to hear more of yours. I, uh, if I may, I would like to say, uh, going back to first party, Splatoon 2 is a fantastic game, oh, especially. For sure including the Octo expansion, just everything about it was handled perfectly. And I think that with Splatoon 3 coming out on the same console, it's going to perform incredibly well. And then as well, you can't talk about the Switch without talking about its third party. It is absolutely phenomenal. It is great. Oh, totally, I'd agree with yeah. you. Yeah. I'm gonna make my list a little bit brief because there's a lot I have to say about these games, but I would mm. say the Switch's third-party support has actually been better than the first party, which is a very rare thing to say about Nintendo consoles. So I'm going to kind of cheat with this one, because this is my favorite third-party game, if you will, on the Switch. And that is Mario & Rabbids Kingdom Battle. Such an oh. underrated game. Really cool that they took the Mario & Rabbids crossover idea, which seemed insane. It actually made a really, really good game out of it. It has a cool story, great gameplay mechanics, great exploration. If you don't have the game, definitely pick it up. It's not that expensive to get. Highly recommend it. Then we got stuff like the Crash games on Switch. Crash Insane yep. Trilogy and Crash Nitro Kart or Crash Team Racing Nitro Field are great games. Crash Nitro or Team Racing Nitro Field being even better than Mario Kart 8 in my opinion. Katamari Damacy Reroll. Again, it's a remake, but it's a remake of a fantastic game. And if you don't have Katamari on the PS2, it is definitely worth getting. And, and we even have and we even have games like the Witcher 3, Skyrim, yeah. Overwatch, then, yeah, yeah, like even Fortnite, Mortal this, Kombat like, 11, Apex Legends. It's, it, it's so, it's so weird seeing how many third-party companies are willing to support the Switch now. When I remember that Ubisoft uh, publicly uh, denounced the Wii U because they simply thought it wouldn't sell enough copies of Rayman Legends, so it became multi-plat afterwards. And now the definitive edition is on the Switch. That's <laughs> irony for you. Yeah, that <laughs> is so... irony right there. And just is, if few... you, what was that? Go ahead. Go ahead. You're fine. It was just a few like cliff notes about third-party games. I'm just looking at my Switch collection right now, and there are a ton of great games. The Puyo Puyo Tetris games are amazing. South Park Ooh, RPGs, <laughs> South Park Stick of Truth, and South Park The Fractured But Whole. Those are pretty great games. And just overall. The Switch has had some great third-party support, and even if it may be lacking in first-party games, which we'll definitely get into, there are a ton of third-party games to make up for it. Then as well, they have a massive indie game presence with games like Celeste. Oh, yes. I mean, just an absolute classic. Yeah. Then you have, as controversial as it is, you have the Five Nights at Freddy's series, which originally a PC game is selling like hotcakes on the Switch. And yeah. you also have the you also have the two games. Well, I mean, one's coming to the Switch at least, but um, 
you have the two games that were really popular in 2020, Among Us and Fall Guys, and Fall Guys is yep. coming soon. But the fact that those games are just coming to Switch, it's just like you wouldn't see that on the Wii U or even the Wii. No, for, like Cuphead. popular games like that. Even Cuphead is on Switch, which Cuphead. You, know, you know, I thought it was always going to be Xbox exclusive, but because of you know Nintendo and X, uh, Microsoft's you know blossoming relationship, we got. Uh, one of the great challenging uh, run and gun games of this modern era. I mean, truly, it is a tough game, but it's so great to see it on the Switch. And there's a physical copy coming uh, whenever they decide to launch the DLC, but it's yep. coming out. But yeah, that's. I mean, Cuphead is a uh, is a great one. Um, uh, Shovel Knight. A... Shovel, Shovel Knight for sure. Out. Shovel Knight is a great addition to the Switch, even though. He's not in Smash. He is an assist trophy, though, so we can't overlook that. Mm. And also all the Shantae games that are on the Ooh. Switch. Yeah. I think, actually, I think most of them, if not all of them, are on the Switch now. Because I think yep. the original one was being ported. Yeah, there's also, um, if I may, uh, just really quickly, uh, yeah. they have the collections for Mega Man, like, all the Mega Man games, like the original Mega Man games, the Mega Man X games, the, the Mega Man Zero games, and the ZX games. They have uh, Street Fighter Collection. They have the Ace Attorney games, the original three. Um, they have um, all the original Devil May Cry games. I mean, in terms of third-party no more heroes, in terms of third-party content, Nintendo is loaded. Um, however, like Dimitri said, that comes with caveats. Yep. Yeah, and this is where we start to get into some of the cons of the Switch. Not the Joy-Cons, some of the actual <laughs> problems with the Switch. Which, actually, the Joy-Cons mm. will tie into that. So, I said before that the Switch has the reverse problem of having a lot of good third-party support, but poor first-party support. What I mean by this? Well, as we've talked about, the Switch has no shortage of third-party games. A lot of great games on the Switch from other companies. But when you pick up a Nintendo console, at least in my opinion, you are looking for those games, the Mario's, the Zelda's, the Donkey Kong, Pokemon, the I know that's Pokemon. kind of, it's a different thing, Smash Bros, and we have got some of those series, but unfortunately the Switch has had a major, major problem when it comes to providing new experiences. Now, with the Switch games we talked about, games like Zelda The Breath of the Wild, Super Mario Odyssey, Luigi's Mansion 3, and even stuff like Splatoon 2, Super Mario Maker 2, Animal Crossing, stuff like that. The games are so good on the Switch that you just want more and more of that great stuff coming in. You got Super Mario Odyssey, you probably really want a sequel if you really like that game. I know I certainly do. And unfortunately though, yeah. the Switch just has a big problem. And I'll list the series that it's missing so you guys can get a really good idea and there are a lot more. So the big <clears> three <throat> that I think about, we don't have Mario Kart 9, we have Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, which is a port of a Wii U game that's approaching 7 years old. Mario Kart Live Home Circuit, which is more of a toy than anything else. That's it. We don't have a proper Mario Kart on Switch, and that's Nintendo's biggest franchise. And don't give me the argument of, oh, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is selling so well, I can't believe it's No. Splatoon 3 <laughs> is coming out on the same console. I don't want to hear it. If you're going to say it, I'm just going to say, la, 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 I can't hear you. La, la, la. <laughs> <laughs> then, we don't have a new Donkey Kong. Donkey Kong was a pinnacle of quality, always has been on Nintendo consoles. It really showcased the power of every console it was on. Super Nintendo, Donkey Kong Country Trilogy, some of the most graphically impressive games at the time, and they still look great today. Then you have games like Donkey Kong Country Returns, Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. What do we have on the Switch? We have Mario and Rabbids Donkey Kong DLC, and we have a port of Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze with a new funky mode. Again. Ports are good because they give people a way to play these games if they've never played them before, if they want to replay them. But oh my gosh, where are the new games in these franchises? And then Pikmin 4, where is that? They said it was near completion yeah. in 2015 and it's approaching six years since 2015 when they said that? I just don't get it. And now let's get into the smaller series the Switch doesn't have, shall we? Oh boy, this is going to be a long list, so you guys probably want to get a Mountain Dew or a Red Bull when I'm saying this. Okay, so the I got Switch... my popcorn. Okay, we are missing new entries in the Captain Toad series. I don't know if it's going to be a series or not because there's only limited to one game, but a sequel would be very nice. We don't have a new Chibi Robo. 
We don't have a new F-Zero. We don't have a new Rhythm Heaven. We don't have a new Wario Land. We don't have a new WarioWare. We don't have a new kind of me sports game. We have Miitopia coming. We are missing a lot of series. We don't have a new Star Fox. There, Metroid, that's coming, but it's very far off. There could be a 2D game or something to like ease that. But oh my gosh, the Switch is lacking majorly in the first party department. As great as games like Super Mario Odyssey and Luigi's Mansion 3 are, they're a bit far and few between if I'm going to be completely honest. Like 2017 was a banger year. 2019 was good, but everything in between has just been a sandwich full of crap. Yep, I can agree with that. And I think that, yes, uh, you were talking about ports just a minute ago. Uh, yes, they are a fantastic way for those people who have never played those games before to relive them, or if you're just willing to spend a few extra bucks. But I feel as if, I, I'm sure I'm not alone on this, I feel as if Nintendo is relying a little bit too much on their ports. Yeah. And not to rely. And Lucky not there's a Nintendo Switch port. And not to mention, they're sixty dollars. Yeah, oh, that's and they were stupid. 20, that's and they insane. Were, and they were, and the thing is, they were with Nintendo Selects and everything at the end of the Wii U's lifespan. They were only twenty dollars, so you're paying yeah. three times the price of them on the Switch. Three and what do you get? Flavor, New three funky times mode. The <laughs> and then some games. That's like the same thing. You they have yeah. them on Nintendo Selects, but then you have examples like New Super Mario Brothers U. Yes, it is a great game. It may be a little, like, you know, it's a little bland, but, I mean, mm. it's not worth $60 because no. you, you're taking out the boost mode, and, yes, you're adding New Super Luigi U, but you did that. You made it cheaper on the last console. Even, Why would you do that? Even, like, uh, I don't even think Mario Kart 8 Deluxe deserved to be 60 bucks. Like, they, they fixed a lot of things that were wrong with Mario Kart 8, but... Battle mode. It's, it's, yeah, like battle mode, but 60 bucks for a game that I already had on the Wii U, like, and th the sad part is, is that many people did not own a Wii U. So, because of this, to many people, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is a new game. So, uh, since Mario Kart 8 Deluxe has been, I, I think, one of the top five games selling the most for the Nintendo Switch, this, this gives Nintendo the idea, well... If people are willing to buy $60 ports, then we should just keep doing it. And I hate that. It, it's it's yeah. just yeah. so... It's like non-consumer friendly. And, you know, I love Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. It's a great game. But that should have been 40 bucks. But the thing is, though, you look at Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze and you're like, oh, that's a Wii U game. I It sort of makes sense as to why they do it. Examples like yeah. Skyward Sword HD, which is a Wii uh, game, yeah. that... That's completely ridiculous. That's so spending sixty dollars yeah. on a Wii game with button mapping and maybe a few quality of life changes. It, no, that is not worth sixty dollars. I feel it, like it, for. Oh, I'm I feel sorry. like. I feel like for that game, like I feel like they're just trying to go the Zelda HD route, but they're like, oh, we'll just port it. Well, we'll, we'll it, it doesn't we'll make any it. difference. Yeah, I, I just, it's. <sighs> It's strange because uh, I remember in the Wii U era, they beautifully remade Wind Waker. Um, ah, and maybe... Twilight maybe Princess. Just, yeah, Twilight Princess. I know there was a lot of controversy with, with that remake in particular, but they did change the lighting and they did fix some of the textures and work on some of the models. But um, yeah, those were proper remasters. Um, Skyward Sword, Demich, I'm actually glad that you... Um, showed me this because I, I was in the camp because I never played Skyward Sword so I thought it actually looked good and you were like dude no you gotta watch this uh, you gotta watch this 4k Skyward Sword t uh, texture pack online and I was like oh my gosh this looks th this looks way better than what Nintendo is doing yeah and, and it's just like yeah and I'm just like Nintendo could do this why aren't like it's so easy they have the high quality textures from I, I believe the beta build I remember yeah and they have and they have like they're able to do lighting uh, new lighting in their games um, I'm not sure why they're doing the bare minimum for you know well it's because they're uh, lazy and their new president is really not good but this goes <clears> into <throat> another issue. Lack of legacy content. This is on the complete opposite end of the spectrum. How could we complain about Wii U ports that give people a chance to play older games when we're upset that there's no legacy content? 
Well, there's I a had right a whole, way to do it. What was that? I had a whole rant about this. Because, like, okay, here's an example. So, I did a Tell poll, us, and I think, I think you did all, I think you did a poll, too, about um, the amount of people who've played Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door, and 80% of the people said that they haven't played it at all. Yep. So, yeah. Yeah, that's the thing, like, The Thousand Year Door, that's an amazing game. And also other games, too, across the Nintendo 64, GameCube, and even Wii, DS, Game Boy, all of those consoles. And people aren't really getting the chance to play those. Yeah, and here's the thing with that. Or prior consoles did it right. The Wii had a virtual console, which priced old games accordingly. NES games were 5 bucks, SNES $8, <clears throat> and 64 10 that was a great way to play older content for the first time, or if you wanted to experience it again, it wasn't a big price to pay, which was great. I love the virtual console, and it was great having it on the Wii, 3DS, and Wii U. What they did with the Switch, where they just had, you know, they have the NES and SNES games online. You know why they offer those? Because the nostalgia and the heyday for those kind of games have passed. The ones people want are GameCube, N64, and Wii, and they know that full well. And this will go into another point, but I just want to bring this up. With the legacy content, they need... Or the problem with the Wii U ports isn't that they're Wii U ports. The problem is that they're priced at $60 and they're treated as new games. The virtual console supplemented new releases. The Wii U ports act as new releases. That's the difference right there. And this goes yeah. into another problem yeah. I have with the Switch. This is very subjective, but I'm going to bring it up. I just don't mind bringing it up. I don't care what people say. The Switch has a lot of low-quality first-party games from Nintendo. Is it as bad as some of the stuff we saw in the later Wii U days, like Mario Tennis Ultra Smash and Amiibo Festival? No, Ooh. it's not that oh, bad. Jesus. But I'm not. These aren't good games, and it's this has one of the biggest problems with the Switch. All these games have this problem. Kirby Star Allies. It was a very short game, very easy, even by Kirby standards, and a complete downstep from the Amazing Planet Robobot. It was a complete downgrade in every way. Mario Tennis Aces, much better than Ultra Smash, had great gameplay, but there was literally nothing to do. They didn't even put a stage select screen in. Even Animal Crossing New Horizons is victim to being incomplete at launch. And with a lot of these games, it seems to be more prevalent in the even-numbered years. They release a game unfinished, patch it up with content, use the fix-it-later approach, and then you got the gaming journalists and people who talk about Nintendo saying, oh, they're doing a little games-as-a-service thing. You know, that's really cool. Giving people extra content to play. Maybe they're not making you pay for the content directly, but it's still a scummy practice making people buy an incomplete game and essentially treating them as beta testers. I love Animal Crossing New Horizons, but from what I've heard, it lacked half the content that New Leaf did at launch, which is really upsetting to hear. And I've played Mario Tennis Aces, and let me tell you, I was so burned by that game that I ended up selling it and questioned every future Nintendo game unless I was 100% sure that it'd be worth getting. I skipped Super Mario Party because of it. And then we got one more. I know this. people really hate me for bringing this up. Paper Mario the Origami King. This is a case where the game was complete, but they really missed a golden opportunity. Super Mario Odyssey, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, and Luigi's Mansion 3 returned to the roots of their series and really expanded upon it. Paper Mario the Origami King, it's another one of Tanabe's passion projects where he just does whatever he feels like, makes it different <laughs> for the sake of being different, and didn't listen to any of the fan feedback. And yes, I know the game has gotten good reception, but at the same time, I'm pretty sure a game in the style of the first two games that people have been begging for for years would have gotten better reception. I highly recommend yeah. checking out Arlo's review of it because he does a much better job at explaining it than I do, but that's just how I feel overall. So my Shout opinion... For, in my opinion, since I've been really big about Paper Mario lately with talking about it, um, so I think, just in my opinion, on its own right, I think it's a good game. Like, it like it has some good things going for it. Like, I mean, I enjoyed my playthrough of it, but compared to games like Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door, which is one of my favorite games of all time, it doesn't hold a candle to it. It just, like, like it's lacking a lot of the things that made the older games special. Like, with Tanabe what's, and everything, so... What's, what's sad is that Tanabe, he understood what fans want, and he just laughed in the face of it, and just is like, no, yep. here's we, a ring we, system. we don't want to do that. Yep, here's a ring system. I think this he is the same said, guy. 
Jesus. Or go on oh, I think he even said in his interview, like, oh, I'm trying to make all the fans happy. <laughs> and he's like, yeah. I understand that the older fans like their older battle system, but we're just going to have a ring in here and have everyone enjoy it. Because, you know, everyone's going to enjoy the ring system, aren't they? Ring! Who doesn't I... like ring? I just can't believe that after all the backlash from Sticker Star and Color Splash that they would attempt to do something like this again. It just yeah. feels it feels really tone deaf, not only on Tanabe's part, but on Nintendo's part as well. Because I feel like Nintendo has the power to say no to Tanabe if they wanted I, to. Yeah. Just There's a lack of legacy content, over-reliance on ports at $60, not enough new games, still problems not listening to fans, and again, the terrible online and Joy-Con issues. The Switch... Uh, here's the thing. Yeah. These have been talked about to death, so I think we should just keep this short. Online, it doesn't really work. It's terrible. It's $20. It should work. It should be free. I guess the NES games and SNES games are a cool bonus, because I do like going to NES Tournament Golf and the Lost Levels occasionally, whatever. Donkey Kong Country 3, there we go. But it's just... Yeah, Nintendo, get your online together. You really need to upgrade to at least Windows XP. And as for the controllers, <laughs> yeah, it's very weird, because we had a Game Boy survive the Gulf War explosion. Meanwhile, a Switch controller can't survive a speck of dust. So what I believe happened is oh. the Switch was rushed to market. It wasn't fully tested, and that's why it has a yeah. plethora of hardware issues. So I'm hoping for the mm. Switch Pro it's tested accordingly. I yeah. hope so, because I've gone through two pairs of Joy-Cons, I got the Hori Split Pad Pro because I couldn't take it anymore. My wallet couldn't take it. I'm not gonna put her through another tragedy. Okay. I hate to um, I hate to tell you this. I have eight pairs of Joy Cons. Oh my goodness. Do they all drift though? I have not one. I you know what? I do have one, but it's not paired. It's just the right analog stick. That is the only uh, one that drifts, and that is the first. That's the. Uh, it's from the first. It's fr it's from the pair that I got in the box set. You are very lucky because, uh, oh man, even even my Switch Pro controller started drifting. I mean, I remember Dimitri when when we first got the Switch. You and I both remember when uh, there were those videos of the Switch overheating, and uh, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. And I think I think you actually had to send your Switch in. I sent my Switch in once because there was a weird smell coming out of my Switch. Um, I had to give that in. I mean, Nintendo's customer support is always excellent. Like, I have no complaints there. But it's gotten to the point, this is what, what ticks me off the most, and I'll keep this brief, but instead of addressing the problem with the Joy-Cons, all Nintendo does is, oh, we'll give you free repairs. That's it. And you know what? They've gotten sued for it multiple like, times. Right and they're so. still getting sued. No, they're yeah, right six, so. I'll admit this. I believe this. they're in their sixth yeah. lawsuit. Wow. And there's six lawsuit. Look at that. And they don't give up. I mean, look, I hate to say, you know, rightfully so to Nintendo for that, but come on, own up to your mistake. At least, you know, come out with, like, better versions of your Joy-Cons before you come out with the Switch Pro. Like, I get it. Maybe you have better Joy-Cons for the Switch Pro, but at least come up with a solution for now, you know? I think... I think what's really sad with that is, too, they had the Switch hardware revision, and the Joy-Con drift was a huge problem long before that was announced. So there was a perfect yep. opportunity to use a redesigned Joy-Con uh, for mm -hmm. those uh, hardware revisions with keeping, you know, the general, you know, the shape intact. But yeah. they missed out on such a golden opportunity. And I, I agree with you guys. I hope they kind of patch that up with the Switch Pro if it does ever happen. Now, here's the I, thing. Yeah. I have a lot of pairs of Joy-Cons as well. I think I have six or seven of them. None of them have drifted, fortunately, which I'm very lucky about, but it shouldn't be a problem, and I believe it's real. It's just, like, the hardware issues really need to be addressed. So, overall, talking about the Switch four years later, I'd say I kind of have a love-hate relationship with the Switch. It's home to some of my favorite games of all time, and I love that you can bring it anywhere, and I love all the games you can play on it, but at the same time, I'm still found to be, or I feel a little underwhelmed, because it doesn't have enough first-party games, it doesn't have a lot or good online, it doesn't have legacy yeah. content, and just, it could do a lot more. So if they address yeah. these problems, like have more first-party games, have legacy content, fix the controllers, it would easily be my favorite system of all time. So I'm expecting, hopefully, better things to come. We already know that future years for the Switch are going to be much better than last year. We're going to have 
Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Pearl this year, or Shining Pearl this year, which is great. Gonna have Mario Golf, which could be good. A few titles that are probably not announced yet, so things are looking pretty good. Yeah. So I'm expecting yep, the future of the Switch to be very bright. Yeah, and with my overall opinion on the Switch, it's actually my favorite Nintendo console. Despite its many problems, it's just the hybrid aspect of it has been very useful for me because I go places a lot. Well, I mean, right now, not really, but I yeah. I still... The convenience it. of it. Yeah, it's just very helpful for me, like, with with like the aspect of it and everything in the games it has some of my favorite games of all time and just right. like it's just overall the experiences i've had from the nintendo switch have been better than the other nintendo consoles despite its problems so that's what makes it my favorite console yeah and i i'll piggyback off of that one actually receive the switch there's something about the switch with its portability it's i don't know there's with such a golden variety of games yes it does have the it does have the potential to have more uh, first right. party content and then as well, potentially legacy content. Let's hope for that. But there's something about it. It's just the ergonomic design, the presence, like just the feel of the Nintendo Switch. It's This is the definitive way to play video games for me. With Smash mm -hmm. Brothers, Mario Kart, even though we need Mario Kart 9, we need it now. Uh, mm -hmm. And then as well, games you wouldn't expect. It, it's just a very well-rounded machine. And I think that Nintendo definitely still has some work with it. Yeah, uh, Furukawa said uh, that the Switch is currently, I'd say, halfway through its lifespan. So we definitely have the potential to see more of this console. And I think that we will see something soon. I don't think it will be perfect, but I think yeah. it has potential. I, I really hope so, because, um, you know, like you said, we are halfway through. But I have to agree with you guys. Um, Demich, I know you're more mixed on the Switch, but honestly, like it's it's the most convenient game console I have right now. Um, my gaming setup isn't perfect right now, so a lot of my PS4 games, you know, aren't accessible right now. Also, PS4 has a lot of issues with the controller dying like super rapidly. Um, and also, even though I don't go out a lot these days for obvious reasons, um, my brother, uh, you know, my little brother sleeps in my room early, so it's really nice to have, you know, the luxury of taking the Switch out of the dock and playing in handheld mode in the living room for a little while. It's, it's really nice, um, and I think, I really think the handheld console hybrid uh, for the Switch, it's, it's one of my favorites in gaming. I do agree. There are issues that need to be addressed, but, you know, I, I can't knock down, um, you know, the idea of the console itself. Like, it works for the most part. Oh, totally. And while, while I have my issues with it, you know, I think it is one of my favorite consoles of all time. I just wish, you know, Nintendo would treat it as such, if you get what I mean. Yeah, I totally get I what you mean, yeah. because... I'm going to say I do like the Switch. Don't think I hate it because I really enjoy the system. And in fact, if I could choose just one game console, hmm, like as a way of playing, I would probably choose a Switch. I wish I had more games, but if I had to choose one style of a system, a console or handheld, or, yeah, of course I'd choose a console handheld hybrid. And the Switch is really cool when it comes to that. I play my Switch a lot, but it's just, I really expected more when it comes to first party output. I wish some of the games were of higher quality. I wish that it had yeah. legacy content, better online, and better controllers. That's really all I'm asking for, and it shouldn't be too hard because Nintendo has done those things in the past before. But overall, right. I'm going to say I like the Switch. I've had a great time with it over the years. I would say 2017 and 2019 were my favorite years with the Switch, and there's always something to play, even if it's third party, which is cool. I'm very excited for Crash 4 coming out on March 12th, so I'll get that day one. I'm super excited for it. And it looks yeah. like things are looking up, and there's going to be a bright future for the Switch despite its flaws. Well, anyways, I think that about wraps it up on my end. Do you guys have anything to say before we wrap this up? So, yeah, like, as I was saying, it's just a really convenient console to have. And, yeah, basically, most of the things what you said. And even though, like, like adding to the stuff with ports, even though most of the ports are overpriced and take the place of other Switch games, there are good um wii u ports like super mario 3d world plus bowser's fury recently oh, yeah. which we forgot to mention 
Yep. Is like almost feels like a new game because they added Bowser's Fury and all the new quality of life updates. Thank you for bringing right. that so, up because I do actually have to say one thing about that. Yeah, I would definitely consider that to be essentially mostly like a new game. Bowser's Fury may be a bit short, but the experience was so satisfying that I would say it's definitely worth getting. That was one of the right. few Wii U ports along with Mario Kart 8 Deluxe and Hyrule Warriors Definitive Edition that was worth double dipping. So when I refer to the Wii U ports, I'm mainly talking about stuff like new Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe, new Funky Modes, stuff like that. But yeah, I would say right. 3D, 3D World Deluxe. has been excellent, so I'm very happy how that turned out. I agree, and if my final comment on everything is, I think that we forgot to mention that the Switch came out at just the perfect time. Especially with everything yeah. that is going on right now globally, mm -hmm. more, now more than ever, people have been connecting with each other uh, especially through the lockdowns, through playing video games. And I think that Nintendo's uh, prioritization on family games rather than, like, you know, single player, they do have a focus on them, but they do have that presence with family games. That's what they're most known for. And I think that the Switch is a perfect console in that regard. They have the time. And then as well, uh, you know, they have yeah. specific games. Like you said, you have Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, which is a perfect multiplayer game. You have Smash. Sure, the online might not be perfect but at least they have the opportunity to play those games especially during this time that's a wonderful point to bring up right there because it reminded me of when we were at the very beginning of whatever happened last year the whole pandemic we were all scared we didn't know what to do so when it came to holidays easter was coming up usually we do a little celebration or something so what i decided to do to go around this is i called up my friends they're essentially like my cousins since we've known each other since life and I scheduled a little Easter celebration in Animal Crossing where I hid gold nuggets around my island and I made it into an Easter egg hunt and we had a ton of fun playing it. And really, the Switch has provided some great memories, great experiences with the family though. Prefer, in, in my opinion, I think the Wii was definitely more connecting with families and stuff because of games like Wii Sports and stuff Absolutely. like that. I really wish we'd see yeah. stuff like that on the Switch because it'd be perfect for it. But yeah, I do agree with you there. And it's a really good point yeah. to bring up. I feel like with um, family and friends and everything, I feel like the Wii was the best console to get families together, and the yeah. Switch was the best console to get friends together. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, and I... Then, I I'll yeah, go, go ahead. Ahead. Oh, no, uh, I, was, I was just going to say, um, the reason why I'm so fixated on a Switch Pro is because the potential that the Switch has right now is immense. Like, even more so than what it is right now. Like... Uh, you know, fixing all the kinks that the Switch has now with a better revised version is just, it, that's all I want. That's literally all I want, besides, like, everything that we mentioned beforehand. But, you know, um, yeah, uh, what were you going to say, Star Chronics? No, nah, no, I was actually, you basically got it slap job. You got everything. Okay, cool. Well, anyways, I think that about wraps it up. Happy birthday to the Switch. Here's to a great, bright future. I'm Demich. I'm Ty the Guy from TND Productions. I'm Reese. And I'm Star Chronics. And keep calm and da da on.